Welcome to the Susan Sly Project, where entrepreneurs rule, startups launch, and the side hustle becomes the main hustle. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Susan Sly. All right, everyone. Well, yes, there is a lot of crazy in the world right now. And there are, you know, there are a lot of people who are thriving despite the circumstances. And by the same token, there are people who are literally paralyzed because of all of the fear and all of the things that are going on in the world. And when I think about two people who have spent their careers really and truly in service, I can think of no one better to serve all of you at this time, because more than anything, you have the opportunity to get up every single day and take a step forward to building the life of your dreams. So my guests today are absolutely incredible. First and foremost, I have to read the accolades. Normally I can memorize them, but there are so many. First and foremost, um, the first person I want to introduce is an international speaker, researcher, corporate consultant, best-selling author and entrepreneur. On top of everything, she has spent her career guiding people from seemingly, I love this, impossible states of depression, anxiety, and hopelessness to triumph, freedom, and happiness. And on top of it, she is a clinical hypnotherapist and founder of Crystal Vision Life. And her incredible partner in life, her amazing husband, has sold over 500 million books. I mean, seriously, 500 million books. He's <laughs> appeared on Oprah. He's appeared on CNN. He's been quoted in Time magazine, Forbes magazine. The list goes on and on. Um, I have read every one of his books. And on top of Chicken Soup for the Soul, One Minute Millionaire, one of my favorites, Cracking the Millionaire Code, a book that changed my life was The Power of Focus, which he wrote with Jack Canfield and Les Hewitt uh, back in the day. I think I've read that one about five times. So I want you all to just wherever you are, be excited. I have Crystal Dwyer Hansen and Mark Victor Hansen here on the show today. So thank you so much for being here. We are so happy to be here with you, Susan. Delighted and excited. Thank you to be with you, our friend. Well, thank you. And, and I mean, really and truly, you know, when I think about your combined years that you've been serving all of us, I added it up. I mean, it's over 70 years. <laughs> 70 years of serving entrepreneurs, small business owners, people all over the world. I mean, really touching lives. And, and a lot of people, you know, they might go and serve people for a short period of time, but this is your life's work. And Crystal, I want to jump right in with you. There are a lot of people out there. There are a lot of women out there right now who are overwhelmed. They're the, the stress of what's going on in the world. It's, it's hard for them to deal with. Um, they're struggling even getting through their day. I mean, you, you're a certified coach, hypnotherapist, transformational coach. What do you say to someone who's struggling right now and listening? Right, Susan, it's such a good question and so important right now because there is so much craziness going on in the world particularly now, there's always some craziness, right? With the world, that's life. Um, but right now we've been challenged more than we could probably ever have dreamed of. And the, the most important thing I think people can remember, what I, what I tell my, my clients, my friends, everybody, is that while it appears that life is coming at us, it really feels this way inside. It feels like life is out there somewhere and it's coming at us. And we're just kind of holding our breath and ducking and dodging and, try and trying to keep the balls up in the air, right? But the reality is, and this is absolutely true, I promise you this, your life experience, what you experience as life is really happening right here mm. in your own mind. And so if you can remember that and spend time every day, the most important time you will ever spend is that time you'll spend quiet time with yourself and shut off the news, don't spend all day. I mean, you can check in. I, I realize there's a lot at stake in a, in a lot of places right now, but um, shut off the news and decide to go spend that time with yourself mm -hmm. because you can create the experience you want completely. And we can get into that more deeply, Susan, but, but it's just so important to remember that. I love that, Crystal. It's that when people are feeling disempowered it's to take at least one step that is empowering if even if it is shutting off the news right, right. walk away i can promise you probably in five six hours from now it's going to be pretty similar to whatever it was <laughs> exactly exactly there's so much negative news and that's what the world you know it's everybody it's all there is anymore really and so if we don't take control of our lives 
and understand that no matter what happens, life is going to go on. And it's especially important to take charge of your own life in your own center of being. It's right here. And you can create any amount of success, happiness, joy um, in any political environment. We have to remember that. We have to remember that and keep moving forward with that and, and start those steps today of that deliberate creation. Mm, beautiful. Thank you for that. The, the, that leads me to my next question, Mark. You and I were speaking somewhere. I can't even remember. It might, it, I don't even know if it was New Jersey or California. Um, I can't remember, but <laughs> one of the things I do remember is us having a conversation afterward about turning things around fast, you know, that, that mindset. And, and you can't be a leader in personal empowerment if you aren't even able to manage your own emotions quickly. The majority of our listeners and viewers are business owners. They either have a small business, a side hustle, or they are doing a startup. What are, what are some techniques people can use right now to be able to, you know, let's say they are ensconced in the negativity, to be able to turn their, their mindset around really quickly? That's why we wrote our little book called Ask the Bridge from Your Dreams to Your Destiny. Because if you're alive, you have a destiny. And right now, all of us have been cloistered in this uh, cocoon for the last eight billion of us for the last seven or eight months, depends on what country and what city you live in or what state. But the, And I know we're world around here. But the fact of the matter is each of us has got to pivot, reinvent ourselves. Even when we wrote this book, we'd spent two years writing a great, inspiring book that was, we said, look, you're going to have to ask yourself, ask others and ask God. And we asked ourselves. And when I went bankrupt 1974 like that, suddenly, just like what you said, I had to decide to pivot and I went to my roommates and I said, look, is there anyone that's young that's not a lawyer, not a doctor, not a famous person, not a celebrity that's speaking? Guy said he's a few years older than you. Went racing out to hear this guy mesmerize 500 real estate agents, at the end of which I asked this guy, Chip Collins, I said, I asked, I said, can I take you to lunch and learn how to do it? He said, look, the chance of you making it as speaker is one in a thousand. You're not going to make it. I'll, I'll gladly take a free lunch because you asked me. And I'll tell you exactly what to do. If you'll stay out of real estate and you do life insurance, which I did, and I did a thousand talks a year for the first three years. So two points. Number one, you've got to ask yourself because you've got to reveal to yourself, what is your destiny now? Not what job you had yesterday. You got fired from the airline yesterday. They're not going to rehire you. It's not the government. It's not the economy. It's up to you and you alone to make a decision. Like Crystal was saying, inside out, you know, what you impress is what you're going to express. So I impressed that I'd be a speaker. Then everyone said, do you have that in the book? And I immediately wrote a book called Stand Up, Speak Out, and Win. I said, this isn't a New York Times bestseller. It's not a national bestseller. It's not an international bestseller, but it's my bestseller. And I want to sign to you, your wife, your kids, and your dog if you have one. And everybody bought it. I sold 20,000 copies. For, so I went from $2 million down to way up. In one year, I tripled my income, made $200,000, sold 20,000 copies to $10 each. And I'm saying every one of us has got to re-pivot by re-asking ourselves, reinventing ourselves, reorienting ourselves. Because there's absolute abundance and there's going to be more than ever before as we wake up. Absolutely. That, to your point, it's that, that reinvention, that willingness to ask and be bold in that asking. And Crystal, I want to ask you this question because there are a lot of women out there who don't ask. They don't ask. They, they think that, or, you know, maybe it was how they were raised or they think if they start asking for what they want, people are going to think that they're arrogant. What, what tip would you give to a woman who is saying, oh my gosh, what you're both saying is resonating for me. And I realize I haven't asked for what I want. Right. It's such a great question, Susan. It's so true about women. And in different scenarios, we found that men are more reluctant to ask questions and other scenarios women are. When it comes to the big important things, women are. We're reluctant, we hold back. Um, when it comes to the little things women will ask, like for directions or anything that's, you know, sort of a humble ask, where men won't, they won't, you know, sort of humble themselves. So there is a disparity in that. But the truth is um, that people are afraid to ask. And what Mark and I discovered is there are actually seven roadblocks to asking. And we found that each one of us carries at least one of those roadblocks inside of us. Most of us don't even know it. And most of us carry more than one of those roadblocks. And if you want, Susan, if we have time, we can go through those roadblocks. They're just really important and they're all in the book. And we have incredible stories about how people sort of recognize their roadblocks and 
and overcame them because when you continue to carry that roadblock, I promise you, you will not get what you want. You will not get what you deserve. And it's all waiting out there for you if you just learn to take this asking journey. Mm, beautiful. And and I do, I want to go through the roadblocks and I want, I, w- I would love for everyone to understand too, this, this concept of we get to choose. We get to choose our lives for their, my oldest daughter is, um, I rescued her from a shelter in Malawi and she had been raped. Um, she had been, um, all of her clothes thrown in a latrine pit. They found her at age 14, walking the streets of the long way naked. She was pregnant. And when I met her in the shelter, I said, what do you want to do with your life? And she said, she looked at me and she said, I am going to be an accountant. And meanwhile, she's sleeping on a cinder block bed. It's full of roaches. She's, she's cleaning the latrine. She's walking three miles to school one way, three miles to school the other. And I, um, they weren't allowing uh, foreigners to adopt kids out of Malawi. Anyone who did, they bought the kids. That's, I'm not going to go there, but I will say so. I was never allowed to take her out of the country, but I sent her to the, the best boarding school for girls. And, and she just went on to become this phenomenal, phenomenal woman. And one of the things I learned from her was that our circumstance does not dictate our ability to ask. She had such clarity. And Mark, I know you have worked with people who've gone from homeless to millionaire. You've worked with people who've been told like you were, you're never going to be a speaker. People who said, you're never going to be an entrepreneur. You're never going to do this. Before we go into the seven roadblocks, I want to ask Mark, I want to ask you this question. Is there a difference? And maybe there isn't between someone who just is bold enough to ask versus someone who's not, are they just born with it? Is it something we can learn to do? Well, I'm just very first, curious about that. First of all, I want to congratulate you and thank you for taking care of that girl with oh. said who she'd done. She knew the power of a made up mind. She asked herself, what do I want to be no matter what? And it was an account. Didn't matter that she was in a roach infested bed. Didn't matter that she was sleeping in urine and her clothes smelled that way. The point is every one of us got, I'm bankrupt, $2 million upside down, told I'll never make it. And I decided in favor of myself. And I'm saying our ask book does that. And, and it's not, it, it is ask is God gave us, like we said, ask yourself, ask others, ask God. God gave every one of us the ability to ask. And like you're saying, ask boldly, but most of us have never internalized and give ourselves permission. So on this call, Susan, Crystal, and Mark are giving 100% permission to every one of the yes. hundreds of thousands, if not millions of listeners, because this is just going to ripple out. You've now got permission to ask and ask boldly to get out of the untenable, unacceptable, unapprovable situation you're in and go onward, upward, goodward, and Godward. And when you do that, you make everyone else better off. Like I wrote in the book, you said, One Minute Millionaire. One of us becoming a millionaire employs 10 people directly and indirectly. A billionaire does even better, 10,000. And so what happens is those of us that get up and and wake up to our divinity of of destiny, of spirituality, mentality, financiality, and sociality do better. And every one of us has got to learn how to ask. And all they got to do is hear us give them validity and permission, and then they can emerge. And when they emerge, 100% of the world is better off. And we want all 8 billion people to do this. So then let me just give you what's happened for us. Our book came out April 28th during the height of COVID. We've done podcasts. People are writing us like crazy and saying, look, I bought your book, Ask, but I bought two of them and I gave one to my best friend and we're going through every question in the book. And for the first time, we're finding out who we really are. Shakes, uh, sorry, Socrates said, the unexamined life is not worth living. I knew what Socrates and Shakespeare said, but I'm just so excited to compress this and say every one of us has a great destiny in front of us because the cocoon's about to wake up and we're going to become high flying butterflies. Well, I'm excited about the book for a variety of reasons. And you guys don't even know this because I am, you know, I'm such an advocate 
for not just my friends. I mean, and and just so everyone knows, Mark endorsed one of my books when I was when people didn't even know who I was. Well, outside of Canada, they didn't know who I was. And so I'm I'm buying the book for all of my tech team staff um, in my AI company. Um, I'm buying the book for my other staff, and I'm also going to be buying it for my top leaders in my direct sales business because it is it is so important. I can't emphasize this enough. It what breaks my heart is when people are playing small. And, and to the point that, that both of you have made, we have the ability to ask, and I want, if you're watching on YouTube right now, I just want you to smash the like button right now. I want you to comment and give yourself permission. If you are watching, um, if you're listening on Spotify or iTunes, just give a five-star review and then go tag us on social media right now and say, I give myself permission. So I want to share a quick story about you, Mark, and then I want to get into these roadblocks. So wherever Mark and I were speaking, we I think we've done three events where we were both speakers, but um, there was, I see, I don't even remember where. It's not important, but this Mark said something to me and it was profound. He said, Susan, if you write 100 goals in 24 hours, within those 24 hours, 10% of those goals will be on their way to coming true. And so I did. And I sat there and I wrote a hundred goals. And sure enough, within 24 hours, little things started happening. And so Mark, I just wanted to publicly acknowledge you in front of the thousands of viewers and listeners, because it's a practice that I still do every year. So now I write um, 300 goals every single year, three to 500 goals. And I do it over a 24 hour period. And then I print them all out and through the year, you also taught me something. This is this is funny. So purple pen, because Mark said when you achieve something, you have to write victory in purple. Cheers, <laughs> purple pen. I've never called pins before. This is a first. <laughs> One more time. That is so Cheers. good. We got to do it again. Cheers. <laughs> and, and so now, Mark, thanks to you, I have I I cannot I travel with purple pens. I, I have my my physical office, my home office, wherever I go, I always have a purple pen with me because when one of those goals happens, I have to write victory in purple. I wanted to publicly share that with you, and um and so I you know and thank you thank you for that. It really changed my life. Purple glasses. Oh. Purple glasses. Okay. <laughs> All right. So when we the next time we see each other, we'll do a purple theme. <laughs> No crystal. All our purple we should. We should. Yeah. <laughs> it's God's highest color. It's the top of the electromagnetic spectrum. And just, you know, we got to go through the seven roadblocks. But the other thing I'd ask you is that if you'd be willing and everybody out there writes their goals and then writes, sends them with this with the victory, I'd like to put together a victory journal to inspire everybody else. Because if they write the goal, it like you just said, it comes true and they start to snap. Yes. Yes. And it it is... Um, you know, all, all levity aside, and, and the viewers and, and listeners know I'm so transparent. If someone has changed my life, I'm going to be the first person to tell them. And it, it really did. I would not be the co-founder of an artificial intelligence company. I would not be where I'm at in the direct sales industry or in any other industry. The speaker I am, I just, you know, in one day this week, I booked three virtual speaking events, um, you know, without that one simple thing and and we wherever we were it might have been new jersey with jeff combs i don't even know we were sitting um on these on these chairs and um you know kind of away from people because everyone was like asking for your autograph and you told me about that and it really changed my life so thank you thank you so let's talk about these roadblocks i know everyone's going on amazon right now and ordering purple pens that's what's happening <laughs> <laughs> so crystal do you want to start with yeah. the first roadblocks so i want to go back for a second to what you said about how sad it is when people don't play full out susan because what what we discovered is that you know when we're born as children we come into this world with the absolute unabashed ability to ask for everything we want to know who what when where why how and we also are really comfortable asking for more, 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 right? Yeah. But that is beautiful. That is human spirit jabbing us, wanting us to evolve, wanting us to grow, wanting us to learn. And then over time, what happens is, depending on how we were raised, 
you know, our family, our school experience, teachers, they are the authority, don't ask unless you're called on, you know, um, jobs that we've had where no one's interested in, you know, getting feedback, no one's asking, whatever, life just basically starts to reject us over and over. And we start becoming afraid to ask. We start becoming almost ashamed to ask. We become ashamed to not know everything. We're afraid mm -hmm. to reveal that we don't have all the answers. And that is a sad state. And so I wanna talk about the, the roadblocks, which is number one is unworthiness. It's a huge one for people. And that is just that underlying sense that we carry. And it's so subtle sometimes, Susan, that most of us aren't even in touch with this. With this. We just live with it and feel like we just kind of don't deserve the best. We don't deserve what we really want. That's that unworthiness. The second one is naivete. And I, I tell this story in the book of when my children were, were very young, I had two daughters, 16 months apart. So we had this beautiful Filipina woman who worked for us and she would come in and make all these lovely you know, dinners and dishes every day. Well, one morning she shows up with this fruit. She cuts it on a plate, hands it to me. It was juicy orange fruit and I tasted it. And uh, she said, taste this crystal. And I taste it and I go, Melda, this is fabulous. What is this? I've never had this before. And she goes, it's a mango. And I was like, a mango? How come I've never had a mango before? I can't believe it. I've traveled all through Europe many times. I've done all these things in my life. How did I miss mangoes? But it made me think, you know, how that if I'm naive to about mangoes, what am I, what else am I naive to? You know, mm -hmm. I grew up in Idaho where we have a lot of potatoes, but no mangoes. So we all sort of go forward with this life experience from which we've come, but we don't know enough to start looking around. What other people are we passing every by each day that might be the best friend we ever had, the greatest colleague we've ever made, the, the greatest business connection or a potential business partner? Just because we don't even, we're not aware that there's something there for us and you know other opportunities. So it just made me become wildly curious about everything because it's partly the curiosity that is shut down from our childhood. We just stop wondering, we stop asking questions and that is so sad. So Mark and I are saying, let's wake up that beautiful childlike curiosity and ask about everything. Um, the next roadblock is doubt. And that's sort of that gray area. You've seen it before where people just sort of exist like, uh, maybe I'll do it, but oh, I doubt it's going to work out. It's, it's just a gray area. It's the gray zone of living, we say. And it's just so sad. Um, excuses is really about you know, just always having a reason why, no, I'm not going to do this. I don't need to, I've got this going on. Or it's also that, you know, that person that just has so much stubborn pride, they go, no, I don't need any help. I don't want to ask anyone. I'll figure it out. Right. And so they never tap into the people around them as a resource. They're too stubborn, too much pride, too many excuses. Um, the next one is fear, you know, and fear the fear of asking, I think, is so much about just rejection, the absolute terror of rejection. Some people are truly terrified to be rejected because in some ways it feels like for human beings, we all need love. You know, we all need acceptance and approval. And so in some ways it feels like if someone says no to us and we're rejected, they've, they've taken love away. They've taken approval. And it's just not true. What we try to teach people in the book and in my practice and everything is, when someone does turn you down, when you ask some for something, information, help, advice, when they say no, it's, it has really nothing to do with you. And we all are a bit narcissistic in that way. Truly, we think kind of everything has everything to do with us. And it really doesn't. When someone is unkind to you or when someone just simply can't, you know, grant your request, whatever it is, they're just not in a place to be able to grant that. Maybe they had a terrible day. Maybe maybe, you know, things are going on inside. Maybe they just can't do it. So just, you know, bless them and move on and keep asking. That's the important thing. And then the next one is pattern paralysis. And you know, those people, Susan, who have done the same thing last week, last month and last year, and they're going to stay in that same pattern next week, next month, and the next years. And it's not working. You know, we all, and we've all been there, honestly, we've all probably been in that pattern paralysis where we're just doing what we do and we're not stopping and saying, questioning it, asking the right questions of ourselves. Is this working? What's working about it or what's not working? Should I move forward? Should I pull back? 
Do I need to look at everything in a different way? All of these things that would get us out of our pattern paralysis, but we refuse to do it because we're just frozen. We're like frozen in time. Um, and the last one is disconnection. And for me, that is really one of the saddest ones of all because we're seeing that a lot right now um, in the situation that's been going around the world, basically. And that is when you become disconnected from the dreams in your heart and you start to lose hope and you start to get apathetic about life itself. And we're telling people, please don't disconnect. Don't disconnect from your dreams, your hopes. Plug in again, start asking questions, you know, sit down, ask those questions of yourself, ask others, ask God. And if you are willing to do that, you will see your life start to open up in miraculous ways. Mm -hmm. It is sort of like when you, you know, a lot of us feel like at times in our lives, we come to, you know, this dead end, this dark dead end. But the minute we start asking questions, that dead end opens up into a road of discovery. We've mm -hmm. just opened something up because what we found through the research that we did is that when you start asking yourself questions, literally a different part of your brain goes to work for, for you. And that's the part of your brain that does critical thinking. That's the part of your brain that, that does imagination. When you ask a question, you can't ask a question without engaging your imagination. Now you're out of your stuckness instantly and you're imagining, what if I did something different? That puts you in a completely different part of your brain, the creative part of your brain. Crystal, thank you so much. I love how you went through all seven. And I know I was sitting there thinking, okay, yeah, I've had that one and that one and that one and that one. Just, just as long as they're not all at the same time, right? As, like, <laughs> and I want, Mark, I want you to give the viewers, listeners a challenge because what we're going to do is we're going to give away a signed copy of the book. And so how we will quantify the challenge depends on what your challenge is. So you get to give a challenge. Wow. I, first of all, I, I, can I do more than one challenge? Do, well, first <laughs> of all, we challenge. challenge you to get- Are you book. asking me? Yeah. I have no roadblock around it. It's your, your, whatever. <laughs> I'm going to do two or three. First of all, okay. those, I want all of, I challenge you to get a copy of the book on, on Amazon because we know you can do that. And then join our book club called askthebookclub.com. It's free. And what we want to do is create master askers. But I want you, I want to challenge each of you to get at least one other person to go through it with you during this week and see if you can't write down those breakthrough goals like Susan did. So that's number one. Number two challenge, and I'll just do two. I've just been asked by the Library Association of America to wake people up to how great libraries are. And libraries, you know, saved my life when I was a little kid because my parents were language illiterate. They weren't stupid. They just didn't speak English. They're Danish, right? And, and what happened is I went to the bookmobile and then we did the first story in Chicken Soup about Bill Cochran, one of our neighbors, who was a millionaire who was, uh, you know, couldn't read and was also a school teacher, but he was dyslexic. And then 58 years old, loses multiple millions because he can't read a contract and they stole everything. Goes into the court and the judge says, you'll go down to the library and learn how to read. And so the libraries have asked me to challenge everyone to become a reader. So once you read the book, I want you to buy three, please. One, and give it to a library. And I challenge you to get one person who can't read to read. It's sort of like the girl that you adopted and, you know, she's great and she could read, but reading is a fundamental freedom of freedoms. Not because I sell books and I've sold a half billion books. And I'm more blessed than anyone. And I got the best wife in the world and you as a friend, how can we do better? But the point is, what if we could free up the 4 billion that aren't free, like what you did by going to Africa? And, and that's, we are... I get goosebumps telling you that, and that's the whole chicken soup saga, right? We gave goosebumps, god bumps, chili bumps, and 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 we tried to get we change the whole world one story at a time. But now we can change the world one reader at a time. I'm asking everybody to put it on their goal list. Just get one person that can't read to read. Isn't that a nice challenge? Mm. All right. Well, I'm writing those challenges down, and I'm going to do an unsolicited plug for my nephew, Sam, who works at the Brockville Public Library. So he, he, this kid loves 
books. He, oh my gosh. And his dream job, um, he's going through college is, was to work at the library. So he's worked at the library all through high school and now he works at the library. So I already know where I'm donating my book. So here's what we're going to do. If you tag here, you have a choice. You can comment below if you are on YouTube. Okay, you will go into a draw for a signed copy of the book. I will be seeing Mark and Crystal get a book signed. Or you can tag us on um, my Instagram at Susan Sly. You can tag us on um, Twitter. You can, um, th that's where you can tag us. And so I'll put you in a draw for a book. And then Mark has thrown out the challenge. I think the book club is amazing. And I, I'm excited to join the book club, you know, Thank so. You. <laughs> so let me so amazon.com that's where we want to go and get the book right and, and then i place to get it yeah okay so amazon.com and and you everyone heard if you own a business this is the perfect thing to give to your staff right now i cannot emphasize this enough if you have a direct sales business why wouldn't you buy this book for your top leaders i mean it's a phenomenal phenomenal gift so Crystal, Mark, thank you so much for being here. You, thank you for everything you're doing in the world. We, we, we love it. We appreciate you. Let me just uh, hitchhike on your business opportunity. It, we teach one of the things in, in the book is that you ask every staff member, what are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? And how do we increase what you're doing in your division, whether you're a secretary or the lawyer or the accountant, 10%? Because if a company had a hundred people, a thousand people, 10,000 people improved by 10%. The company just rocks. Yeah. Well, I know as soon as we're done this interview, I'm going to buy a whole bunch of books. So yeah. <laughs> thank yeah. you so much for being here. And to our listeners, I just want to send you so much love. God bless. Go rock your day. And uh, if this episode has been helpful, again, we would love a five-star review. Share it on your social. Tag me. I actually will read all of your tags. If you are commenting on YouTube, I read all of the comments on YouTube. So with that, God bless. Go and rock it. This has been another episode of the Season's Live Project. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another epic episode of the Susan Slot Project. For more tips, strategies, and ideas, visit www.susansly.com. <laughs>